Today we're going to be um, ministering today. I got a title for this message because people are always asking me after the service, what's the, what do you want to title it? And I always have a tough time finding a title for it. Well, I got a title this time, and actually the title's about going to give away the whole message. So you can title it, uh, If Your Soul Wins, Your Flesh Loses. If your soul wins, your flesh loses. So you can just title it that. <clears throat> particular scripture, we're going to be going to Colossians. Colossians chapter 2. <clears throat> Start in verse 9. It says, For in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, of course, in Jesus. And you are complete in him who is the head of of all principality and power. In him you were also circumcised with the circumcision made without hands by putting off the body of sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. Buried with him in baptism in which you were also raised with him through faith in the working of God who raised him from the dead. And you being dead in your trespasses and in the uncircumcision of your flesh he has made alive together with him having forgiven you all trespasses, <clears throat> having wiped out the handwriting of requirements that was against us, which was contrary to us, and he has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross, having disarmed principalities and powers, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them in it. I just want to stop right there for tonight. Verse 15 is the one I really wanted to focus on. It's, it's a particular scripture that's always kind of intrigued me. I think about it quite frequently, and especially here the last week or two, the part about being a public spectacle. And that's always been kind of a, uh, like I said, it's always intrigued me because when you look at a, a public spectacle, it, it looks like he was made the public spectacle. And so I'd always kind of, you know, I always thought about this. Well, how did he make them a public spectacle when it looked like he was the public spectacle? You know, he was beaten beyond recognition. Um, it looked like a complete, I mean, a complete failure. <clears throat> oh, yeah, everybody did left, left him. He's left by himself. Um, you know, he's, he's killed. It looks like, it looks to me... Like everybody that was against God got their way. But it says in here that he made a public spectacle of them. <clears throat> and so there was something I wanted to bring forth tonight, and I'm hoping you can catch it. I tried to bring it to Kathy, and she kind of caught it, you know, and, and it, it's like it's out there and you're going, <laughs> you're going like this. But somehow you and I, as Christians, and we're not just you and I, but every, anybody who's a Christian, is going to have to come to vision, not just revelation, not just knowing it in your head, but we're going to have to somehow come to vision is that when, when, when those things attack us and we don't rear up, we're making a public spectacle of them. See, because we live so much in the natural, we always feel like we're being made the public spectacle. Do you know what I mean? <clears throat> in other words, you're, you know, you're not going to get your own way. Uh, somebody's, uh, you know, cuts you off in traffic. You get angry. You get, you get hurt. You get offended. <clears throat> the natural thing to do is to strike out, right, and to justify yourself and to make to to, to uh, protect yourself from being made a public, you think you're being made a public spectacle, but what you don't realize is that you're only being. Listen, in the spirit realm, you're being made a public spectacle if you yield to those things. Let me put it to you this way, maybe, and I think most of you are probably catching it. In the spirit realm, those things are being made a public spectacle 
the same way Jesus is being made a public spectacle in the natural realm. But see, we're not seeing that. That's why we have such a hard time. We know it, and we get revelation of it. God speaks it to us. But then when we're confronted with those things, we always revert back, not always, but a lot of times we, re we revert back to acting the old way so that we won't be made a public, because we feel like we're being made a public spectacle. We feel like we're being taken advantage of. Do you ever feel that way, like you're being taken advantage of? Do you think Jesus was being taken advantage of? <laughs> but see, he made a public spectacle of those things by not yielding to them. And if we don't come to vision for that, we're never going to walk in it. We're just going to, I mean, I, I, listen, I love people that, that like my sermons, that amen and, and, and shake their heads yes, but that's what we're going to end up being is people who shake our heads and say yes for the rest of our lives and yet never get what it is that God wants for us. See, that's what, see, these, see there was, the, now we can get it. I know we can get it because some of these people had it. That's what caused Stephen to look up into him and he says, I see the Son of Man standing and is there stone in him? Isn't he the one that said, do not lay the, this sin to their charge? Yeah. Do you think he was being taken advantage of? Yeah. But somehow he was able to come up with a statement, do not charge them with this sin. Why? Because he was able to see that they were act that he would that by his reaction he was actually making a public spectacle of them in the spirit realm not in the natural in the natural it looks opposite because everything in the kingdom of God is opposite if you want to lead you got to be a servant if you want to get you have to give you know what I mean and so on and so on if you want to be first you got to be last so if you want to uh, you know we just sang a song we want more we want more we want more you do you realize what you're singing? You're singing, we want to lose more. We want to lose in the soul more. We want your Shekinah glory to come. We want to lose in the soulless realm because the only way you're going to win is if you lose. And if we don't start losing, we're never going to win. And so somehow, it has to be more than just the knowledge of it. Something has to be seen. Paul, was it Paul and Silas who were singing in prison? See, they saw it. That's what caused them to sing in prison. Peter, who was it? Who was it? The Peter and who else came out and they were rejoicing because they counted it. That were, was it Peter and John? I think it was. I don't know. It was, I think it was Peter and somebody. They came out of the prison and they counted it worthy to be beaten or to suffer for his name's sake. They saw something that you and I are not yet seeing. We, have, we may have the knowledge of it. God may have even spoken it into our hearts, but we're not seeing it in the spirit realm. Because if we actually could see it in the spirit realm, I think it would be, I, me, I think it would be a lot easier to walk in it. Because we see so easily the natural realm. And since that's all we see, we naturally, we strike out and we strike back. And so somehow it's got to come down to the fact that somehow the, the body of Christ has to start making a public spectacle of the demonic realm by losing in the soul. And what we fail to realize is that if we, if we choose to win in the soulish realm, your flesh loses. We've been praying for how many years in this church for healing. I got news for you. Until we start losing, you can forget healing. I'll tell you why here in a minute. Well, you should already know this anyway. I mean, we can continue to pray for it, but we need to pray that we lose. And when I say lose, I'm talking about losing in the soulish realm. Losing in the natural realm. And I'm not talking about, uh, you know, Jesus many times would get angry. But he would get angry because of the hindrance of the kingdom of God that the religious system was, was uh, you know, was, was putting a, a stop on. Jesus wasn't getting angry because he wasn't getting his way. 
That's the difference, you know. I, so I gotta, you know, I gotta bring that up because there's many times you can get ra- There's many times you can be forceful. There's many times you can get angry when you're trying to bring the will of God into the earth. It's when you're trying to bring your own will into the earth. That's when we start. That's when we. That's when we try to win in the soul. We lose in the flesh, and it's really difficult. It, it, that's why I say we have to come to vision with this. You have to actually see this because I can sit here and preach it. And the younger you are, and that's no offense to the youngest people here, but the younger you are, the harder it's going to be for you to understand that because you're not paying a penalty in your flesh yet. The more penalty you start paying for winning, the more you're liable to take this seriously and say, you know, I really need to see this. I mean, I can't speak for, uh, you know, the, any young people that we have here, the ones out on the Internet, but when I was really young, there wasn't anything wrong with me physically. Nothing hurt. Nothing got broader. <laughs> Nothing broke. But as we've lived in this, and had let, allowed our soul to win more and more, what has happened is our flesh is losing all the time. If you want your flesh to win, then the Spirit's going to have to win. If you want to get healed, if you want healing to go, then somehow our spirit has to start winning. Because you can't have, you can't pick and choose the parts of salvation that you want. You can't pick healing and then throw away the losing of the you know losing in the soulish realm, you know what I mean. You can't throw you can't you you can't do that. If you want healing, then somehow we have to want winning in the spirit just as bad. And so every time we don't yield, and boy, if you could if we could get this, if we could see this, every time we don't yield, and you know what I mean by yield. You don't yield to God, but I mean every time we don't yield to, to satisfying our, our own justification, our own, uh, you know, what am I looking for? Oh, yeah, our own selfishness, yeah. Our own excuses. Um, every time we yield to that, you're going to pay a penalty in your flesh. You're, you're, what you're doing is, you're racking up debt. Because notice what the scripture said. It says, having, verse 14, having wiped out the handwriting of requirements that was against us. That means the certificate of debt. And so we've got churches all across America, and this is the tragedy. We've got churches all across America that sing the right songs say the right phrases, but have no idea what they're talking about. And the only reason they sing the right fr- songs and, or sing good songs and say the right phrases is because they're simply repeating what the Bible says. You know, uh, we used to have, sing a song, uh, let's see, he, pay, he paid a debt. I did not, uh, I did, yeah, he did not owe. I owed a debt I could not pay. I needed someone to wash my sins away. Those are good words. Eh, the tune could use a little updating, but <laughs> those are good words. But what we don't realize is, and I've shared this before, and it's w- worth sharing again, is that every time we partake of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you're racking up debt that he's already paid. The devil charges you to use that tree. Let's, let bring it into, uh, 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 let's bring it into a language that people can understand. When you use that tree, you get charged. And you can sing all the songs you want and claim Jesus paid your debt, but here's the problem I have. Why are we still paying the debt? If he set us free from sin, if he set us free from death, if he set us free from sickness, why are we still having it? Because we're being charged. And we're living 
we're living, yeah, we're, we're, he's paid our, you know, it's no different. Look, it's no different than if I paid your debt off. And if you got credit card debt, if you had credit card debt, I know a lot of us are debt free now, and I've, I've always stayed away from credit card debt, but if I was speaking in most churches, or most people out there, they're in debt. If I was to go pay off their debt, they would have to live in something to stay out of debt, wouldn't they? In other words, they would have to not, they would have to not use a particular little square item that's about this about that long and about this wide, you know what I mean, in order to stay out of debt. They would have to take that little square item and either cut it up with a pair of scissors or you burn it. <laughs> you know what I mean? If Jesus paid your debt, you need to take that tree and cut it up, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and cut it up and not use it anymore. Because if you go to using it again, just like if you go to using that little card again, what happens is you go right back into debt. You see what I'm saying? And so people have a, I think of all the people, and look, even if you want to, look, even if you want to, let's, let's look at the denomination, or a lot of denominations, okay? You know, we believe that salvation has physical healing attached to it, right? Well, we know it does because that's the definition. But, but even the, the denominations, you know, they've, they've made this uh, real wispy. And, the, and what they've done is they've taken the healing part and they said, well, that means that Jesus came and he healed you spiritually. It's not physical healing. It's he healed your spirit. Okay, look, I won't even argue with you. But here's my question. Then why are we so spiritually sick? I mean, we're just as, they're just as sick spiritually as we are in the physical realm. So if that's what it means, why are we still sick, spiritually speaking? If he came to heal our sin-sick spirit or soul or how, whatever it is that they preach, why is it that the church is still in the bondages that they're in? And if you look across the board and if I go through people and go through whether it's adults, whether it's teens, whether it's young people, we're a mess. So if he paid the debt, and if he, brought, if he healed your sin-sick spirit or soul or whatever it is that they preach, why is it still sick? It's because we're still living under the same tree, and we're still racking up the debt. Yes, he did pay the debt, but then once he pays the debt, you've got to cut the credit card up and quit using the credit card because the credit card gets it for you fast. You don't have to work with the credit card. You see what I'm saying? You don't, the credit card gets it. You can have it your way with the credit card, can't you? At least for a short time. At least for a short time. You notice how the world system is set up in, uh, according to the spiritual realm. And how we, can take how we can take what we do in everyday life and see how it matches up or how it parallels with the kingdom of God or with the kingdom of the devil. And the credit card is one easy way to, to explain it. And what we did when we came in here and when, you, when we start to receive Jesus or when we get born again in knowing who, that he's the Savior and we start moving into the realm of the kingdom of God, what we want to do is we want to cut that credit card up. Unfortunately, most people hang on to the credit card, and they still keep charging according to the credit card. Yeah. Well, here, just, I don't want to, I don't want to repeat it. That's <laughs> too... That's why when John the Baptist prophesied of Jesus coming as the lamb, and he said, you know, he was the lamb to take away or remove the sins of the world. Right. He says, now the axe has been laid to the root of the tree. And he's talking about the tree of knowledge yeah. of good and evil. Yeah. And we still keep using it. And until we come to, and I'm telling you, it's wonderful to hear it. It's wonderful maybe to listen to the message. But somehow it, we've got to be able to see into the spiritual realm 
and see that we are actually, that when they're laughing at us, when they're mocking us, when they are angry at us, and when you feel you're ta being taken advantage of, you, you, somehow we have got to be able to see that by not reacting according to the world system, but reacting according to the kingdom of God system, we have got to see that we are actually making them the public spectacle. We're not the public spectacle. They are. In the demonic realm, you become the public spectacle when you yield to them. You think you're getting away with it. You think you're getting your way. You think you are asserting your power. You're actually being, in the spirit realm, you're being made a public spectacle. And until you realize that, until we can see that, you know, we're going to have a tough time not yielding to the demonic realm. I mean, I don't know what you guys go through during the week, because I don't talk to most of you. Uh, well, I don't know how I talk to anybody <laughs> <laughs> on the phone unless uh, she's not home and I answer the phone. <clears throat> but I don't know what you face during the week. All I know is that somehow we have got to be able to see into the spirit realm and, and just like these guys did, and that, that causes us to react a different way when we're treated the way that we're treated. So I hope you're catching or seeing where it is that I'm coming from. We have got to start making them the public spectacle. Now listen, it works great, and I'm, I'm very thankful that we can come in here, and maybe you've had a bad week, and maybe you've, you've uh, uh, you know, had stuff go on in your life, and you've been angry, you've been mad, you've been yelling, you know, and, and one of the things that I remember I shared here several weeks ago is that the devil throws everything at you during the week, and you come in here, and you throw your hands up, and you just start worshiping God. Remember when I shared that? And, and then he pulls out the Big Bang one. He pulls out the atomic bomb. You f have a fight right before church. That's always the big one. I mean, I've had more people in the last, I don't know how many years, you know, uh, give that testimony that they always have a fight right before church. Well, if you can come in and you can throw your hands up, listen, I, that's a good thing. I'm, not, I'm certainly not criticizing that at all. But imagine if, uh, imagine if, if when the fight starts, one person will allow themselves in the natural to be made a public spectacle so that in the spirit realm, the demonic realm is made a public spectacle. Imagine if, and then come in and worship God. Just imagine how much better that would be. See, I'm just trying to raise us up to another level. You want to go to another level? That's the level we need to go to. <laughs> I mean, I love the fact that we can do that, that people can do that. I, that's, that is a testimony in itself, and I'm certainly not taking away from the fact that people can walk in here after ha having a lousy week and, of yielding and using their credit card all week long, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and then still throw their hands up. But somehow we need to start cutting up that credit card. Yeah, we need to lay the axe to the root of the tree. Because that tree, and listen, you can, you can sing all the wonderful songs, you can preach all the wonderful messages about how he took our debt. If he took our debt and he paid and he wiped out the, those trespasses against us, why are we still paying for them? Well, see, the denominations fixed it all just by putting it all into heaven. Well, that's what they did, and that dismisses any responsibility from us trying to obtain anything here. That's how they dealt with it. They just finally figured out. They just walked, looked in the natural, saw everybody failing, saw everybody miserable, sick, defeated, whipped, poor, oppressed, depressed, possessed, and they finally decided, hey, this is too much responsibility. We'll lose too many people if we preach the truth. Let's just put it all into heaven. And so we'll get our healing in heaven, and we'll get our spiritual healing in heaven, and, and our physical healing in heaven, and we'll get our tears wiped away in heaven. But here on earth, it's going to be miserable. Great message, isn't it? Makes me want to attend church. <laughs> now turn with me to uh, Philippians chapter 1. You want to drink of that water, Kathy? Uh, 
chapter 1, Philippians, verse, um, let's start in verse 27. Only let your conduct be worthy of the gospel of Christ, so that whether I come and see you or am absent, I may hear of your affairs, that you stand fast in one spirit, with one mind striving together for the faith of the gospel, and not in any way terrified by your adversaries, which is to them a proof of destruction or perdition, but to you of salvation and that from God. And I always like to add verse 29 onto this because it's just a good verse. For to you it has been granted on behalf of Christ not only to believe in him, but also to suffer for his sake. <laughs> that word granted means gratuitously as a favor. It's been granted to you. So when we go back up to verse 28, we read, not in any way terrified by your adversaries, which is to them proof of perdition, but to you of salvation and that from God. That means that, that you not being terrified is proof. Do, do, uh, th th that word has a lot of meanings. It has a meaning also means to bristle. Anybody ever get bristled? So if you don't get bristled, terrified can mean tremble, shudder, fear, be afraid. How, you know, how do people react when they're afraid? There's all kind of different ways people react when they're afraid, don't they? Sometimes, yeah, sometimes they get angry. Sometimes they, what, they, they run away and hide, cry. But I really like the bristle one. See, so by you not bristling, by you not being afraid or reacting in such a way, that's proof to them of their destruction. In other words, you are making, if you, when you don't do that, you make a public spectacle of them. You are reminding them of their future. That's what you're doing. You're telling them, you are, you, you are proof positive you're making a public spectacle of them. Just like in the natural, what did they do? They made a public spectacle of Jesus by doing what? By, they thought, of course they didn't do it, but this is what they thought they were doing, by destroying him, right? So when you make a public spectacle of them, you're actually doing to them what they did to Jesus. You're making them destroyed. You're doing to the demo when you don't yield, when you don't bristle up, when you don't get angry or react in such a way or react in fear. When you react the kingdom of God way, you're doing to them the same thing they thought they were doing to Jesus when they destroyed him. It doesn't look that way in the natural. It looks like you're failing. It looks like you're being taken advantage of. That's the proof of there to see. When we, when, we, when we fly off the handle, what are we proving? We're proving that the, the, we're making, we're actually, we're making, we are being a public spectacle. And it's proof of our destruction. <coughs> it's proof of our destruction because we're on the wrong tree. So it's proof of our destruction. So when we don't yield, it's proof of theirs. But we have to see it. You can see it now in the Scripture because the Scripture says it. But what I'm wanting to know is, in three days from now, when you're confronted with it, are you going to see it then? Or do we need to tape this page of the Bible in front of our head? <laughs> well, that's what the Pharisees did. You know, they had boxes with the, with the law on it so that the law would be on their mind. And they'd have little boxes strapped to their head, foreheads. <laughs> you, see, you see where I'm coming from with this? It's somehow... 
Our soul has to lose in order for our flesh to win. And you see, here's the thing. It's kind of a, it's a good title, but it's actually almost misleading. Because if your spirit wins, your soul wins too. But that'd make too long of a title. <laughs> well, I try to title my messages. I try to figure out something that'll grab people's eye and they'll say, I want to know what that, that's a weird title. I want to see what that says about that. So that's why I put that the way that it was. But see, if your spirit wins, your soul actually wins too. Yeah, your flesh, oh yeah, if your spirit wins, your flesh always wins. But the soul is the controlling factor. That determines what happens to your flesh. Because if the spirit says one thing, but you allow the soul to rule over it, then your flesh suffers. Your flesh suffers. But if the spirit says something, and you allow it to rule over the soul, then everybody wins, all three of them. And we keep partaking of that tree, and that's the, just think of the tree as the credit card. All right? If you can think of the tree as the credit card, it'll put you into debt. And boy, does he charge interest. I mean, just think about how do they try to get you to use the credit card? You can afford it. No payment. Yeah. They make it sound like you can't live without it. Now, just apply this spiritually. They're calling on you. I don't know how often they call you. Yeah, see, they're constantly calling on you. And there's that little voice saying, you need this tree. You need this tree. You can't live without this tree. I'll send you three blank checks that you can write for any amount that you want, for whatever you want to get, up to $22,000. And the devil, because see, that, where are we getting this? Where do we get this system is it's a spiritual system. And so we can look at the systems, how they're run in the natural, and we can see how demonic and kingdom of God systems work. And so if you can think of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil as a credit card, I mean, you go ahead and use it, but you're going to go into debt. And then you can come here and sing all the songs you want about how he paid your debt. But I got news for you. He only pays your debt <coughs> when you yield to his way of life. Then it's paid. Otherwise, you're just singing an empty song and si saying an empty scripture. Because you can claim your debt's paid all you want to, but why are we still paying for the debt? Why do we look at the church and it's the people really aren't any different than they are in the world? Because we still got the credit card. And we're still using it. So think of that as a credit card, okay? So the next time you want to use it, go ahead and use it. And isn't that how, isn't that how a credit card doesn't a credit card work the same way the tree of the knowledge of good and evil does? Think about it in a minute. You got a credit card, you know you have credit card debt, and you don't want to use it. But all of a sudden, all of a sudden, you see something, and what, do you, what does your mind go to? I can get that. And that's exactly what happens when we sit in church. I don't want to react this way. I don't, want, I, I don't want to react in fear. I don't want to bristle up. But all of a sudden, something comes up in our life, and there's the credit card right there. And it's just a whole lot easier to use that. <laughs> you see what I mean? It's a whole lot easier to go off the handle at that moment. We don't want to go off the handle while we're in church, just like you don't want to use the credit card. But when you're confronted with that, 
temptation. <laughs> then we go off and we grab the credit card to use it. And you'll, you'll be in debt and he'll charge you interest. We look at the Old Testament saints. See, they couldn't get free. They were looking forward to their debt being paid. That's where their faith was. They were looking forward to the man Christ Jesus coming back, or coming here on the earth. And that's why it said they died in faith, not having received the promise. What promise? That their debt was paid, and that they no longer had to suffer from that tree. Until Jesus came, they were stuck on that tree. They could not get free of it. Their faith was to look forward to Jesus coming. That's why angels desire to look into what we have, and it's why the prophets search diligently for what we have. Is because we were going to be set free from the tree. Brings a whole new light on the scripture that says, If you say to this tree, be thou removed and cast into the sea. So anyway, think about it. I don't know, I guess we could title this message, Cut Up Your Credit Card. <laughs> <laughs> because that's exactly what it is. It's a fast way to get our way. But it's got a debt attached to it. And we can claim that we're debt-free. We can claim that he paid our debt, and he did. And, and it's good that we sing for it. It's good that we pray for it, folks. It's good that we continue to come here and listen to messages. But we've got to start praying that our eyes are open, that we can see we need to make a public spectacle of them, just like Jesus did. But when we do that, it means you're going to be made a public spectacle in the natural. It can be tough. It can be tough. It's a hard, it can be tough. But I don't think it's tough if you can see. It's only tough because we can't see it. And we think we're being made a public spectacle. That's my message. <laughs> Cut up your credit card. <laughs> Can I have another drink? <laughs> Good. Um, okay, you just think of how you just said that. Credit card being related to the natural realm. So you are in that moment when you want to bristle up and the anger's right there, easy to grab and pay at that moment or you know put it on the credit card at that moment with the anger and then you pay for it later it costs you a whole bunch okay now the way it works the other way is is in the natural realm if you don't use a credit card then you have to work hard save up your money mm -hmm. take your time decide what's worth spending that money on what's not worth spending that money on mm -hmm. And then when the time comes and it's ready to purchase something, you've already taken the time, saved it up, it's, you have the money, it's right there, handy, ready to pay at the time when it's time to buy. So if you put that in the spiritual realm, that's why it's so hard for people to do is because you have to be saving the stuff up ahead of time. You have to be spending yeah. time with God. You have to be spending time in your word. You have to be spending time dealing with that stuff inside of yourself so that when those moments come, you have the money there to pay. You have, and right. of course, he's been ta talking to me a lot about the fruits of the Spirit, spirit goodness, kindness, peace, joy, patience, self-control, all that kind of stuff. So you have to be storing those things up. You have to be getting with God and spending time with him, getting those things, so that when you're in that moment and something needs to be paid, you have that to grab from instead of grabbing from the credit card or the thing that you've always mm -hmm. grabbed from in the, in, the, in the past. And then 
the way I've always looked at it, like, or, you know, not always, but since God showed me, is I just see when you're in those moments, the demonic realm has you like a puppet, you know? You always see those, you used to watch those TV shows where somebody have a dream and the wife or the husband has the other one on the puppet strings, you know? That's the way I've always seen it, and it works. That's the way the enemy, it works for him so much, and I've always seen that, like, when you're in those moments where you know God's told you don't get mad or whatever, and you do it anyway, and I, I just have seen them in my mind standing there or after I, you know, bristled up over something, you know, and later you're looking at it and it's just like you can feel them with those puppet strings just laughing at you. That's what the public spectacle looks like is they've just got you mm -hmm. by those strings making you move, making you angry, making you mad, making you sad, depressed, whatever. And they're just laughing. I always see a bunch of them with the strings and they're all just laughing. But in those moments when you don't do that, it's like, and they're still moving that, trying to get you to move. They can't. They don't know what to do. I see them, them getting bristled up and angry yeah. at those moments because yeah. they don't know what to do. And when you do that a few times, like you actually, husband and wife situations, what I always think, because James and I used to have sure, so sure. many arguments and disagreements and things. And in those moments now where one of us or both of us stand up and say, I'm not going there this time, we've done that enough times now to know how much better that is because we've had to pay the price before, the interest on using that credit card, and it's not good, and it's not fun, and it's miserable. Yeah. And we've done that in the spirit realm and in the natural. Yeah. I mean, we've been in debt in the natural realm really bad, too. And it's much, much better to not be in debt oh, yeah. in both realms. Yeah. You know, but once, even, okay, you take it in the natural realm. Once you've wanted something in the natural realm, took your time, saved your money, made sure you got the one you really, really wanted, didn't go out buying a bunch of other stuff, you get to go in and purchase that thing, it's yours, it belongs to you, you don't owe anybody on it, you know, that is so much of a better feeling than having yeah. all that credit card. And yeah. same way in the spirit realm. Those times when, when we have let ourselves, one or the other of us, let ourselves be made a spectacle. In other words, what that means to me is, okay, I'm going to let you have your way, and I'm going to look like I just gave up and got walked all over. That's how you feel at that yeah. moment. That's mm -hmm. probably not even really what's going on, but that's how you feel at that moment, right. and you do that. And as soon as one of us does that, the whole entire situation just stops. It's like the enemy, all of a sudden you just made a spectacle of the enemies, yeah. and so they just quit. And all of a sudden neither one of you are mad at each other anymore, and the whole thing seemed dumb, you know? It's really good. See, the credit, see, what a credit card does is, it, listen to this, it gives you instant gratification. Yep. And that's what yielding to the demonic forces does. Yep. It gratifies your flesh at the moment, but you're laying up a debt that you're not, you're not going to, yeah, 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 you can sit there and continue to sing about Jesus has paid your debt, but if you continue to pile up debt, sorry, it's not paid. It, it, I mean, you, it, is, it is in the system that he's overall put in the earth. But you're still, what you're doing is he's paid your debt. Now you're going out and charging on the card again for instant gratification. And now you're back into debt again. And uh, see, our whole system is set up to bring these concepts into the church to, put, to keep the church down. You know what I mean? Let's take for an example a lack of consequences. Do you think our country or the world itself is going more and more towards a lack of consequences for your actions. All right, see, and we bring that into the church, that same concept, and so I stand here and try to preach on the Internet or maybe even try to preach to some of you, and you're thinking, a oh, big deal, because you've been brought up in a system that, ha that, that is increasingly more and more makes less consequences for people. In other words, they don't have to pay for anything they've done. You see what I'm saying? And it's not God that's making you pay. It's your, if you live in the devil's system, if you live by his tree, you take his precepts, his concepts, and his ways and his thoughts. You're living in his system, and his system is a system of death. So it's not God doing it to you. It's not God putting you on it. He's put a system in here. Look at this. This is the, this is the neat thing. Is he's put a system in there that if you partake of his tree, he pays you with life. He doesn't, he doesn't charge you 
interest and a debt, he pays you with life. Did you have something? Okay. Just add one more thing. Because <laughs> yeah, sure. I was thinking this when you said this about um, when you were young and you didn't have the aches and pains and things mm -hmm. in your body. And working with some of the youth like I did a few years ago, and even in my own kids and my own grandkids, like for a while that amazed me. Like I couldn't understand. They always seem to have aches and pains and, yeah. and, and uh you know, uh, diabetes in kids, and and what am I trying to say? The epi not epilepsy, they're taking a lot of but the antidepressants. They're taking yeah. a lot of a lot of, a lot of uh, um, autism. What it, yeah. Um, what is that stuff? That, ADHD. That I mean, what do they take? They take Z Ritalin. Z Ritalin and something. I thought there was something started with a Z. Zoloft. Is that what it? I don't know. There's all kinds of stuff. And see, that was, I don't remember, I, that was unheard of when I was a I teenager. Know. See, we're paying a debt. Yeah. But we're, we're, being, we're going farther into debt while we're all singing about how he took our debt and, you know, he paid, I owed a debt I could not pay and he washed all my sins away. He did, but, but we're not walking in it and the leaders aren't teaching it. Right. And kids don't have consequences <clears throat> for their actions. No. So more often they, they are made spectacles of than maybe we were when we were kids because our parents wouldn't allow us to act that way mm -hmm. or get away with those things. Right. And so that the penalties are coming earlier and earlier yep, earlier in life that's than they used yeah, to that's be. That's good. That's a good concept. Sure is. Good. Well, I was even thinking, I was thinking about um, that one uh, part in the Bible where it talks about where Jesus cursed the tree that didn't have fruit. And, I, you know, I'd always been taught that it was like people who didn't have fruit in their life, God was cursed, would curse them or whatever, you know, that kind of concept or whatever. But I'm wondering if that's the tree. That's good. That's the tree because it does not bear fruit. Yeah, it doesn't have any fruit. That's yeah. good. I like that. <laughs> Oh, I just love the Holy Spirit when he does this stuff, <laughs> brings this stuff. Oh, and I forgot to tell you, too, when you were bringing up about uh, um, uh, the little puppet strings. See, the Bible does say they ride you like a horse, and they've got a bit in your, in your, in your mouth, and they, they take you anywhere they want you to go. <clears throat> yeah, go ahead, Paul. Well, the... Uh, you know, in Bible study, we've been studying Proverbs. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I'm all the way back again into uh, Proverbs 7. And it talks about the strange woman, of course. Mm -hmm. And it talks about the idea of a man going and being with a married woman that isn't his wife. And the embarrassment that comes from that, the public humiliation of that. Mm -hmm. And it's sort of similar along the same lines that you're talking about. But another thing that came to me was you, you talked about one of the songs we sang. And one of the parts in there was the fact that um, we're, we're, we're talking about needing more, we're wanting more, uh, and we want a fulfilling of the spirit. Well, first we've got to clean the house first. And if we ever get to the point of having the house cleaned and fill it with his Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. all things will come true. Yeah. Well, the neat thing is, is it's, it's the spirit that cleans the house. So we need the spirit, like you say, to clean that house, but then we don't need to kick him out, you know, and, and decide to go back to, you know what I mean? I mean, we can say, we can use the spirit to cut up the credit card, but then when the credit card company calls, don't say, yeah, send me one. I'm speaking spiritually now, okay? Because uh, uh, I got no people, are, I hope I'm not confusing people on the Internet. I'm just using natural illustrations to uh, give a... a, a a spiritual, because people can understand credit cards and credit card debt and how the company works, and that's because it comes from a system that is designed <clears throat> to gratify you instantly and make you pay later. Gee, I wonder where they got that system. Folks. <laughs> uh, 
a good natural um, picture of this is something that happened today. Um, not in the debt way, but in the anger. Uh, my daughter called and someone that she had been doing business with emailed her a terrible, terrible email. You know, just said all kinds of terrible things. And, and uh, of course, she was just so angry. She was ready to blow. And so she's telling me what she's thinking of what this other gal's doing. And, and when you started this, that, that immediately came to my mind. I told her, I said, you know, you are reducing yourselves to fifth graders or kindergartners. I said, this is how uh, Caden and Quentin behave. You know, it's your fault. No, it's your fault. No, it's your fault. And I said, they're both making idiots of themselves. And I said, if you just quit emailing, don't email her back. You make her an idiot. And I said, you have it right there in writing. There she's made a pet public spectacle of herself because of all the things that she's written. Of course, I don't know what my daughter said, but still, that's exactly what. If we allow that anger to rise up and just go crazy, we're going to pay. I mean, it's you're, you're going to make a spectacle out of yourself somewhere because there's no way you can do that and not, and not get found out somehow, especially when you're doing it on emails across the internet. Yeah. Well, see, the payment that, you, that he charges you is, of course, what? Depression, sickness, oppression, bitterness, fear, yeah, all, all of the bad things that are happening in society. Well, I, gotta, you know, I know we all probably all know that, but a lot of the internet people don't. And all of the bad things that are happening uh, in death, you know, the aches and pains that we get, everything that, 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 we're, that we are experiencing in, in our hum humanity is the result of our using that tree, and, and we're in so much debt that it's hurting us now because he's calling, he calls in the debt. Hmm? The devil. The devil calls in the debt. What happens... What happens when uh, uh, the credit company calls in your debt? Do you lose anything? When you lose, you, what do you lose? Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, when James and I are in the worst part of our debt, you have creditors calling you, calling you horrible names, saying you're a worthless piece of nothing, saying do this, do that. You have not only are you half supposed to pay what you said you'd pay now they're adding penalties on at exorbitant rates your interest rate that was maybe seven eight percent before it has now went to 21 percent or 25 or whatever it is and you don't want to go to the mailbox you don't want to leave your house it's a miserable you don't and you feel like you have a cloud over you all the time that you can't get out underneath of it and you worry about how you're going to get your next meal and you, and you just, it does not look like there's any way out of it. It does not look like you could possibly get out of it ever. Yeah. See, they come and they take, now I, I don't know how it is now, what the laws are now, but my dad used to work for a credit company. And he said he could, he could get them on the stand and he could just take stuff from them right there. He said, he said do you own that ring? And they, if they said yes, I, then you give it to me right now. And they had to take it off and give it to him. Yeah. Now, I don't think it's that way now because they've lessened the consequences all the time, at least seemingly they have. But they can come and they can start taking stuff away from you, repossess stuff. We had one take money out of our <laughs> bank account. Yeah, they can take that. See, so see how that parallels with the way the devil works? Is he works on the same principle. And he will come and he'll start calling in your debt. So somehow we got to get vision. Open God, open up our blind eyes that we may see into the heavenly realm. Who wants to pray? Anybody got anything else? Anybody want to pray? <laughs> uh, Bethany does. <laughs> no, but you... She's, you're still, yeah, she still thinks she's. <laughs> That's all right. I appreciate it. Go ahead. Okay. 
right. <laughs> this one's okay. Go ahead. You say you don't want to or you don't want to? No, I, everybody was looking at me like I was going to say something, but I'm going to pray. Oh. Okay. <laughs> 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 well, Father, teach us how to want your way more than we want our own way. Yes, yes, yes. And that we would lose so that you can win in our lives and that you would get what you paid for. In Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. <laughs> okay. One of these days, huh? 